Welcome to a special edition of the Political Trenches Local Government at Work. My name is Christopher Brown. Ian McCormick is away this week, but joining me for this special episode is Ben Peru, Strategic Steps Consultant and President of Catalyst Communications. Today's episode, we'll be talking about an upcoming event hosted by Strategic Steps called Bucking the Trend, Tackling Abuse in the Political Realm. Ben, welcome to the Political Trenches. I'm looking forward to talking about the symposium and how we can buck the trend. That's a good way of putting it. Thank you for having me. So, Ben, you have been uh, with Strategic Steps. They are hosting this upcoming symposium. Tell the people who are listening what this symposium, symposium, bucking the trend, tackling abuse in political in the political realm, is all about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the idea came about uh, as a result of a trend that we've seen across the country. Um, and, and so we're focusing on local government. We've seen it in a bunch of different organizations, unfortunately, um, where abuse is just becoming rampant. It's uh, it, it was already bad before COVID hit. And, uh, and then COVID exacerbated the issue where suddenly everybody was just a little bit angrier and a lot more vocal about it. Um, and so we've been seeing abuse across the uh, across the spectrum from the public to elected officials is the one that you hear about a lot. And then we also hear about a lot of abuse from elected officials to staff and then from the public to staff as well. Um, so it seems as though everybody's sort of taking it on the chin from all angles right now. So and is so this oh, when, continue on? Yeah, sorry. I was just going to say when, when we realized it was an issue, we started saying, how do we deal with this and uh, recognizing that you know, individual municipalities were trying to deal with it on their own in an isolated manner. Um, and uh, government associations didn't really have the capacity to take on a, something bigger. We realized, well, something needs to be done. So we started putting together some, the, the symposium as a result. So the symposium is running from April 27th to April 28th in Edmonton, Alberta at, and I, I forget the name of the hotel, but the links will be in the show. The Renaissance, uh, that's correct. Uh, the links uh, to buying the tickets at buckingthetrend.ca will be in the show notes. But is this uh, symposium dead, uh, aimed at the elected officials or can administration from local governments come as well or is it more aimed at that elected official role and when you were coming up with this was there consideration into do we need to balance that elected official versus administration uh abuse that people are getting right now yeah we talked a lot about that because the sorts of abuse are a little bit different. Um, you know, whether you're getting yelled at as a decision maker or you're getting yelled at as a, a frontline worker who doesn't really have control over what's happening, it's it's a different issue. But the principles behind it and the anger that's driving it is largely similar. Um, so depending on the 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 session that's taking place, um, some might be skewed a little bit more towards elected officials, some might be skewed a little bit more towards administration. But we realized for an organization to start making change effectively, both sides really have to be taking part. Um, otherwise, it'll just fall flat. As soon as it reaches the barrier of the other side, um, everything just sort of, fall, sort of falls apart. So it is aimed at both groups, yeah. One of the big things that we, the symposium tries to deal with, and I want to get your perspective on it, is empowerment through understanding, solutions for dealing with abuse in the public sector. How does bucking the trend look at empowerment with understanding the solutions that we need to come to uh, over these two-day conference? Yeah, it's... It depends on how you look at it. Um, a lot of organizations are now starting to embrace the idea of change management internally. Um, and, and when you start looking at change management, it's very people driven. It's about that organizational culture. It's about how can we do things in, in a way that's innovative, efficient, um, but really as a team and, and in a way that drives organization. Um, when you start looking at it that way, empathy is sort of a natural byproduct where you start seeing people rather than positions. So that's part of the conversation, especially when we know that there's abuses that are taking place internally. There's harassment between departments, there's harassment from elected officials to staff and vice versa, from management to staff, it's, it's sort of across the board. So internal change management is a big piece of it. What we've done is, is our, our keynote speaker 
takes on that change management piece, but he also has been really innovative in looking at change management from an external lens as well. So how do we take what we're doing in terms of change management internally and start extending that to the community and bringing that into that conversation um, and, and implying that that same sort of empathy and understanding beyond the realm of your own walls. Now, um, now so just, just, that, just for a clarification yeah. here, Ben, I just want to, I started to interrupt here, but I just want to make sure that people understand what change management means, because it sure. seems like it, it's a term that municipalities and local leaders might know, but the average person, whether they be through a nonprofit may not understand what that means. So can you go into a little bit more detail of what actually change management means to the average person who might be listening to this? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, I'm not the change management expert. I will say that up front. Uh, that is our, that that's is the fine. keynote speaker of uh, Patrick <laughs> Remo, who will be there. At Remo, the two day yeah, he's fantastic. He's really fantastic. Um, I could listen to him all day, but the, the idea actually started in private industry and then shifted into government. And now more and more organizations are just taking it on as part of what they do. Um, whereas when it began, it was really, let's bring in somebody to talk about this. Um, but basically what it is, is it's focusing on organizational culture. Um, and, and so recognizing that, you know, as much as yes, you're coming to a place to work, it's also the place that you spend the majority of your time these days. I mean, you're working 40 hours a week. Um, and so the idea behind change management is how do we develop the organization in a way that really drives positive culture? And so it takes different uh, pieces of organizational excellence and sort of combines them into everything that you're doing. So it's the, a focus on everything from EDI to effective strategy to, you know, proper people strategies, which go beyond the realm of strictly HR these days. Um, and it's taking all of those pieces and sort of placing everything that the organization does through this combined lens of positive culture. The symposium, which again, you can buy tickets at buckingthetrend.ca for those who are looking to get tickets, I highly recommend it because Ben will be there giving a presentation. I'll be there as well. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about that in the next segment. But the symposium it runs for two days. It has a cross section of different people. How important was it for strategic steps to bring in a cross section of different municipal leaders to bring in uh, uh, different perspectives into this? Because we all think we're doing it alone, but this conference is trying to bring that we're all in it together mentality, right? Yeah. And that's where it began was let's get the conversation going amongst peers to say, hey, we're also experiencing this problem. Um, like I said, a lot of these municipalities are trying to take it on themselves. Um, and so to build bridges uh, in sort of a networking working manner to say, how do we start finding uh, solutions amongst a larger group um, is really helpful. But we wanted to make sure that people were walking away with actual actionable tools um, so that, yeah, it's nice to be able to get together and say, hey, we're also facing this and and here's what we've found. It's nicer to, to go home with some pieces that you can implement and hopefully start making actual change. And when we started looking at it from that perspective, we realized there's no one solution um, because it is such a big problem. So then you start gathering the different pieces of, okay, this is part of the problem. This is you know, one piece of the solution. This is a solution if it gets past that point. And we started building it out from there. So some of it is proactive solutions um, to try to diminish the amount of abuse that's going to be incoming. And some of it is reactive for if the abuse still happens, now what? And, and so we really tried to approach it from both angles. Is this symposium uh, uh, an interactive uh, seminar? It's not just going to be people telling us what to uh, do and how to do it, but I'm assuming there's going to be times when people can engage and actually bring best practices to the symposium. So that way we can all better understand how to tackle abuse in local government, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's it, everybody needs to be engaged um, to make sure that it's a, it's a successful event. If everybody's droning off while, while there's a speaker rambling on, then it doesn't really do anything. So some of the sessions are speaker driven, um, where there's some interesting stories to tell and some interesting pieces to put together. Uh, some are going to involve some group work where we're going to be able to collaborate and really that's where you start sharing those experiences. Um, we're going to have networking opportunities as well to make sure that, that we are building those bridges uh, amongst 
different local governments uh, and organizations. Um, and then hopefully there's some additional engagement beyond that. There's some of the speakers are still putting together what they're doing. So we know the topic, we know how they're gonna deliver it. And we say, how, how do we take this to the next level? And so now they're exploring some fun ways to do that. Well, I can imagine that I, I, I'm i certainly looking forward to being there and learning from the speakers who are also in attendance as well. A reminder to people, buckingthetrend.ca, get your tickets, April 27th and 28th. Tickets are on sale now, so be sure to grab your tickets. You do not want to miss the symposium. We'll be right back, though, in a quick second to talk about what you can expect and what are some of the tools that you're going to be taking away from these, this two-day conference. So until then, talk to you soon. Uh, as we continue our conversation about uh, bucking the trend, uh, we want to turn to what people can take away from this upcoming seminar on April 27th and April 28th. Tickets are available at buckingthetrend.ca. So, Ben, I want to start with this. This looks like a jam-packed full event for people to learn from industry leaders, but also learn from people who have been on the ground. Uh, we start off with our keynote speaker. We've already talked about him a little bit, but I want to go a little bit more in depth. Patrick Remo, uh, Remo, sorry. Can you talk about how we got him to come speak here? Was it an easy request and uh, answer yes? Um, well, luckily he lives in Edmonton, so that made it easier. Uh, but he was he was actually really excited about the the topic at hand, um, and, and we were really hoping he was our first choice. So when he jumped on board, we were excited about that. Patrick is uh, he comes from an interesting background. He was a local elected official in the Philippines um, and took far too much abuse there, um, and, and ended up moving to Canada for for a number of reasons. But that I mean that that played into it as far as I know. Um, Regardless, he came to Canada and shifted into change management and uh, really made a name for himself. He started uh, heavily working in local government. He worked for a, a major Canadian city and then was uh, was poached by the private industry and uh, worked. Uh, he was in change management for Canadian Western Bank. And now he uh, just started Lululemon's entire change management department. Um, they didn't have it as a thing before and and they said well if we're gonna do that this is the right guy to do it um so he he brings a, a number of different perspectives uh both in his work experience as, as a change management expert um as a an immigrant as a, a member of the lgbtq community he he really has a cross section of interesting pieces that uh bring a, a lot of different you know a range of perspectives to this one of the big things that this uh, this two day symposium wants to really hit home is solutions solutions for dealing with abuse in the public sector. Now they have we have a, a lot of great uh, individuals and people who are coming from different organizations to this symposium. But can you take me through some of the key things that people will be taking away from the? a solutions base that we're hoping people get from the two day symposium. Yeah. And so we tried to do it in a way that we address a number of different topics. And from that, we sort of looked at it as what do we need to talk about as the issues within this space? And then what do you do about those issues? So every session should have takeaways that, that will help you move forward in dealing with harassment, abuse, that sort of thing. Um, and and the, the problem is so rampant that, I don't think there's a limit to the number of topics we could cover. So we tried to narrow it down to an interesting cross section that, you know, everything sort of leads into the next, but they all work individually and, uh, and collectively. Um, you know, I've heard everything from, you know, council being stopped in grocery stores to the point that they can't go out anymore and have to order online to staff outright quitting because council approved a tax raise and, uh, and the last time that happened, the amount of abuse that came in was just atrocious. And so we we're looking at every aspect that we can. Um, so again, we are doing it from the change management aspect. A lot of it is, you know, organization driven. And then we're bringing in different pieces related to, to different sorts of abuses and different mitigation techniques. 
And one of the seven sessions that is going to be held up during the symposium is handling online harassment. You talked a little yeah. bit about that uh, earlier, but this seems like one of these things that with the rise of social media, with the rise of online hate and abuse, it is the most important thing you want to take away from right now is how should we be handling that online abuse to not like you said, not only of the elected officials, but the administration, because we often forget that the administration are people as well. Yeah, and they're usually the ones handling municipal Facebook accounts, Twitter accounts, um, these unfortunate people who, you know, they do a great job and they really work for the the residents. You know, they're trying to put out important information and they're trying to put out, um, you know, notices that matter and, and, and that sort of thing. And it just is met with so much backlash and it doesn't matter what they're posting about these days. People are very vocal online. And uh, depending on the platform, they're more vocal than on others. Twitter is a very angry space. Um, Facebook is getting there as well. And so there's not many safe spaces for local government when it comes to the digital scape anymore. And so you, you're left with this situation where staff are posting and they're cringing as they're doing it because they're going, we know we're doing our job. But if they post something that upsets people, they're going to hear about it. If they post something about snow plowing, suddenly everybody's mad that their street hasn't been plowed yet. If they're posting, you know, about ongoing service provision, then they're being yelled at for wasting resources and told that they're doing busy work to justify their roles. And it's literally everything these days. Um, and on the you must have worked side, in yeah. communications for a town because I, as a former <laughs> municipal employee, I have exactly, I know exactly what you're talking about, Pat. It's really gross. It's really gross. I uh, I was talking about the need for, you know, a little bit more support to local government communications teams recently, just because they are on the front line of receiving this stuff. And the amount of people that resonated with was a little bit upsetting. It was nice to see that I, you know, I'm talking about something that matters. It was sad to see how much it matters. Um, but it's true for elected officials too. If, if you have a counselor on Instagram usually their responses are not the friendliest. Um, even if it's something that's out of their control, you know, a lot of times provincial issues get brought upon the the local elected officials or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, there's a lot of ignorance and it all falls onto local government shoulders. So, so the digital piece is a massive one. And we want people to walk away who attend the symposium with actionable tools that help mitigate the damage caused by this harassment that we are seeing. So you need to get your tickets at buckingthetrend.ca. Honestly, you will not, you will be angry at yourself if you don't uh, attend this conference. I really think you should. We also want people to understand that solutions to address internal and external issues of harassment will be on the table during this two-day symposium. And the key takeaway about that is internal and external. We often remember about the the Facebook post, but we often forget, as Ben said in earlier on in the show, abuse can come between departments as well. And we have to find solutions for that. So Ben, how important is it for people to look for solutions internally as well for abuse of against elected uh, local leaders? Yeah, it's, it's huge and it's growing, unfortunately. Um, it's, you know, I get uh, news alerts. Uh, I do a lot of media monitoring, but one of the pieces that came up today was a, a city manager that, you know, is now being charged with assault of one of their employees for physically assaulting them. But we that's an extreme situation, but it's a symptom of a larger problem where, you know, tensions are high, anger is kind of everywhere, and it, it gets taken out on different people. I, I've witnessed employees quitting because council is so harsh on them in public council meetings because they're trying to prove something to the public about, you know, how they address uh, fiscal restraint or how they want to make sure that service provision is done well or whatever it might be. And so the internal piece is a big one. And uh, and we we try to address it through a few different ways. Again, change management, we do take on the EDI topic, um, which is a, a significant piece these days. People are, are recognizing it more. Obviously, it's been an issue for a long time. But sorry, uh, equity, diversity and inclusion for those that don't know. Um, 
And so we take on that piece. Uh, I'm doing a, a session on communications and how to build communications tools that will help mitigate uh, abuse issues. And that too is internal and external because as much as we focus on how external communications can make a difference in the community, having effective internal communications makes a big difference too. Um, we have a session that's dedicated to, to governance and how governance plays into this. Um, obviously that's Ian McCormick's wheelhouse. Um, we have a, a panel discussion that's gonna be taking place with you know, some officials who have seen both sides of this and are gonna be speaking to both sides. And so the internal piece is huge. And I would say it's equally as important as the external piece. You, you 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 basically took away my next talking points, Ben. So that, <laughs> it's great though. From time to time, it's great to have a guest, a host who does that as well. Um, we we often talk about the on the internal and external, and we're going to be talking about that with uh, Beyond Diversity Incorporated. They're hosting using inclusion, curiosity, and empathy to change the conversation. But we we all it all comes back to this when walking away from this two day symposium. You're going to be dealing with harassment going forward. It's not going to change overnight. And I think that is the big thing that I want people to take away is we're going to give you the tools. We're going to give you the work tools to incorporate some of what you learn in your organization. How important is it for the two-day seminar, symposium, sorry, uh, Ben, to get these tools and not just get them and not do anything, but actually implement them. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, it's like any plan or strategies that you have at the local government level. If it sits on a shelf, it's a useless document. Um, I've seen this a, a number of times where you have this great community plan, you have a social plan and council approves it and then you do nothing with it. That's not a plan anymore. Um, and, and so it's the same with these sorts of tools incorporate them. And, and we're trying to make it a, a easy enough to do so that it becomes part of the workflow. So it's not, you know, take this and then it's going to cost you money and time and resources to put it together. It's take this and just start using it. Um, it we want you to succeed with these pieces. If we can reduce the, the local government abuse that's taking place, then we win. So, you know, our job is to make it as easy as possible for you. It certainly is. And there's a great lineup of speakers, which you can check out the bios and the uh, pictures of the people who will be speaking and giving presentations at the Bucking the Trend Symposium on April 27th and 28th that going, going to buckingthetrend.ca. So highly recommend you check it out. We'll be right back after a quick break uh, to just close up and just give our last thoughts on why you should attend this upcoming symposium. Till then. So, Ben, we have talked about bucking the trend, the symposium. We've talked about the keynote speaker. We've talked about some of the tools that the attendees will be coming away with. But the million-dollar question that should be on everyone's mind is, why should I attend? And what is the answer to that, Ben? Uh, because you have to. That's, that's really the answer. I mean... It... Unfortunately, there's nobody else putting forward enough solutions to these issues right now. And we've we've talked with a number of municipal associations who go, this is fantastic. We don't have the resources. We don't have the capacity. We don't have the budget to be able to put this together. Um, but we love that you are. And, and so it's sort of been shifted more and more on to us as uh, as other people take a step back and realize, you know, we're not the ones to do this. And so it, it's nice that that uh, we've been given that trust where we are the ones to do this. Um, but it, really there needs to be something done. It's, it's such a big issue. And like you said, I don't see it necessarily getting better if nothing is done to, to start curbing the issue. Um, we've put together a, a group of speakers that add a lot of different uh, tactics to people's tool belts that, that bring different stories to the table from a wide range of experiences. Um, we're trying to do it in a way that's engaging and, and that will start a larger conversation as well beyond just this symposium. And so really what we're trying to do is, is empower these municipalities to start taking on the problem and taking it on together. Um, I, I don't know that anything else should need to be said beyond that. 
uh, really, you should want to protect your staff and to to protect your elected officials and to start, you know, seeing perhaps your biases or, or your blind spots in the issue and whatever it may be. We're really trying to take on this this as an important topic. And we we certainly need to tackle the abuse. And that is the hence why the name is Bucking the Trend, Tackling Abuse in the Political Realm. Like Ben said, there are key things that you will want to take away from this uh, symposium, whether that be empowerment through understanding local governments being a safe space, not only for their elected officials, but for administration, how we're going to be dealing with harassment today and tomorrow and for the future. And the one thing I want people to understand is this is going to create networks for yourself, your organization, with other groups that have gone through this, who might have best practices that you can bring into your organization. And that's what we need to do. We can't do this one-on-one -on -one anymore. We have to do it as a group. And let's start by let's start by bucking the trend and tackling abuse in that political realm. So Buy your tickets today at buckingthetrend.ca. You can uh, get your hotels there as well. Uh, it is at the Renaissance Edmonton Airport Hotel, April 27th and April 28th. Ben will be giving a, a seminar on the 28th. I will be there on the 27th. Please get your tickets and come because you will not want to miss this two-day symposium. So, Ben, thank you so much for filling in for Ian this week. It's a pleasure to see you again, and I'm looking forward to tackling this abuse with you in April. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy that we were able to sit down. So with that, we will be back for another regular edition of the Political Trenches Local Government at Work in two weeks, where we're going to be talking about housing. Until then, talk to you then.